Good afternoon. I am Bren Cuny, Manager of Member Services for the Ohio Restaurant Association. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this free ORA Restaurant Education Series event, 15 Million Reasons to be Allergen-Free in Your Establishments. Settle in to learn a lot of good information today. First, I want to quickly tell you about Ask ORA. Recently, the ORA branded rebranded our information resources to Ask ORA. Have a question? We will help you find the answer. Ask ORA is a trusted source for Ohio food service industry information, recommendations, and best practices for ORA members. Document and article topics include running your business, working with your government agencies, developing your workforce, and much more. Through Ask ORA, the ORA staff serves as an extension of your team. We find the answers you are seeking on the matters important to your food service business, whether it be music licensing, food safety, city, county, state, and federal requirements, social media, marketing, or HR. You ask, we answer. Before we get started, I want to review a few housekeeping items and let you know how you can participate in today's webinar. To keep the webinar interactive and to learn more about who's on the webinar, our speaker will poll the audience. Please respond to these questions. At the end of the webinar, we're going to answer all your questions. And after the webinar ends, you'll be sent a survey. Please respond to the survey in order to, for us to improve our offerings. So let's get started. Currently, we're looking at an example of the GoToAttendee interface, which is made up of two parts. The viewer window on the left, which allows you to see everything the presenter is going to share on her screen, and the control panel on the right. Within that control panel is how you can participate in today's event. So let's look at that. By clicking the orange arrow, you can open and close your control panel. From the view menu, you can set the control panel not to auto hide if you prefer to keep it open. The audio pane provides audio information. By default, you have joined this webinar via mic and speakers. Click audio setup to select your computer speaker or headset devices. If you prefer, you can join the audio via telephone by selecting Use Telephone. And the dial-in information will be displayed, including an audio pin. At the end of the presentation, we will answer your questions. To ask a question, simply type in your question and click Send. This is also where you can let the moderator know of any issues you might be experiencing during the webinar. For those of you who have been on our webinar before, you may note there's a new um, option, Handouts. So under the Questions tab is the Handout tab. This is where you can download a PDF of these slides right away. So here are our speakers. We're going to start with Marcia today. Marcia Ginsberg holds an Associate's Degree in Culinary Arts from the Culinary Institute of America. Chef Ginsburg has been with the Columbus Culinary Institute at Bradford School for seven years. She feels it's her duty to arm her students with the tools they need to be successful in their careers and to find their passion. She believes that knowledge is power and teaching is learning. But may, before we get started, let's ask the audience a question. Okay, so the poll that we're asking is, how often do you train your staff on food allergens or intolerances? So if you go ahead and um, answer these questions, give it a few more minutes. We'd like to get to 100%. Okay, so we're going to close that poll, share the responses here. So it looks like 67% um, do training at initial training only and 33% do no training. So this is definitely something Marcia might want to mention. Uh -huh. 
do initial training. It's good to see that people do initial training. And for people who don't, maybe this uh, webinar or these, this information will um, interest them to uh, learn more about it. So why should we, as restaurants or restaurateurs, be concerned about allergen-free in our establishments? Because there are more than 15 million people in the United States who have allergies or food intolerances. So what is the difference between a food allergy and a food intolerance? Basically, a food allergy is the body's adverse effect arising from a specific immune response that occurs as a result of a food, usually a protein. A food allergy can be life-threatening as a result uh, of an anaphylactic reaction. But a food intolerance is an abnormal response to a food or additive. It does not involve the immune system and it is not life-threatening. A <clears throat> food allergy, food allergens uh, can either be uh, parts of food or ingredients within a food, usually a food protein that are recognized by immune cells negatively and trigger food allergy symptoms. Some of the most common allergens, uh, the most common food allergens are milk and dairy products, egg and egg products, fish and shellfish, wheat in the form of glutens, soy and soy products, peanuts and tree nuts. There are actually more than 130 different food proteins or food ingredients that can be allergens. A person, person can be allergic to any food. What is the difference between shellfish and mollusks or molluscan? Shellfish are shrimp, crab, crayfish, and lobsters, and mollusks are scallops, clams, mussels, and oysters. Some of the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction are hives, itching or skin rash, swelling of the lips, face, tongue, throat, or other body parts, wheezing, nasal congestion, difficulty breathing, abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, lightheaded, a lightheaded feeling, or even fainting. Symptoms can be uh, mild to uh, severe. In the case of an allergic reaction called anaphylaxis, a severe allergic reaction is called anaphylaxis. It happens quickly and it can cause death. Severe allergic reactions might be swelling of the throat or air passages with difficulty breathing, anaphylactic shock with a drop in blood pressure, uh, a rapid irregular pulse, or loss of consciousness. Each year in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration estimate that anaphylaxis to foods result in more than 30,000 emergency room visits, 2,000 hospitalizations, and 150 deaths. The prompt administration of epinephrine via an auto-injector called an EpiPen during the early symptoms of anaphylaxis may help prevent serious consequences or death. Let's talk about some common intolerances. Common food intolerances are celiac disease, which is also known as gluten-free, irritable bowel syndrome, and lactose intolerance. 
some reactions to the food, common food intolerances might be bloating, gas, cramping, and diarrhea. Yes, these are all uncomfortable, but they're not deadly. There are hidden triggers for allergens, intolerances, and they are items that are included in ingredient lists that many people, whether they be chefs, servers, um, or anyone, who don't realize uh, that they are variations of an allergen or an intolerance uh, common, uh, common uh, ingredient list. For instance, albumin is an egg product, casein is a milk product, arachis is a genus of plants with pods that ripen underground, which is a type of peanut, surimi is a fish product, edamame is a soy product, bran and spelt, of course, are wheat. Many times we use pieces of bread to keep brown sugar soft in kitchen containers. However, we forget that a person with a wheat allergy or an intolerance would be affected by this procedure. And at this time, we'd want to launch another question to just kind of see where some of your concerns are. So um, what are the concerns that are most um, allergens that are most concerned to you and your staff? Um, go ahead and attendees answer these questions. We're going to just take a couple seconds here. I want to make sure that you're awake and enjoying the presentation. And we just took the, the top ones at this point. Okay, let's a couple more people, we're almost at 100%, so if one more person votes, we might get to 100%. Okay, we're at 100%, yay! Let's close this poll. And we'll share it. So, what allergens are the most concerned to you and your staff? Peanut and tree nuts are 50%, milk and dairy is 50%, Soy and wheat are 33%, and egg does not even show up as a concern for many of them. Well, that's very interesting. Certainly, um, peanut and tree nuts are something that we need to uh, realize or be uh, pay attention to even uh, when we talk about peanut oils. So basically, what does this mean to us? Uh, whether it's back of the house or front of the house, we basically need to train our staff about allergens and intolerances. We need to speak to our purveyors to learn if they are aware of how to handle these items, not only in their warehouse, but also on the delivery trucks that are coming to us. As far as the uh, front of the house, we need to uh, keep our workstations and self-service areas clean and without any contact, cross-contact issues. We need to train our front of the house how to handle and serve special dietary requests and what the emergency protocols are for an anaphylactic crisis. As far as the back of the house, the back of the house needs to understand food labels and types of products that are being purchased. Uh, when they receive and store these products, they need to understand the importance of storing all-purpose flour away from a product that will be used to accommodate gluten-free meals um, because, menu, um, because items such as flour become airborne, airborne and invade or contaminate. For all of our staff, communication is the key. We need to teach our staff what cross-contact is and basically how to prevent it. We need to know our resources, not only the National Restaurant Association, but the Ohio Restaur uh, Restaurant Association and the FAIR organization. We need to teach our staff about proper cleaning, personal protocols, prevent and
Marcia, you are um, coming in and um, coming out, so we need to fix that. I think we're having um, some internet issues uh, to the uh, to the attendees. Well, um, so hopefully we'll be able to get that fixed correctly, quickly. It's choppy. Just have her try stocking. Sorry about that. We're going to um, do a poll question now. Um, we're going to do the third one is going to launch this. Is Do you have written storage procedures in your establishment? If you could go ahead and vote right now. Okay, we have 83% um, can get one more person to vote, and I think it would bring us up to 100%. Okay, I'm going to close. So do you have written storage procedures in your establishment? 40% say yes, and 60% say no. So, Marsha, maybe you can talk about that for just a quick moment. Cer certainly. I think that 40% um, who have written storage procedures are high above the curve. That is uh, wonderful. And as far as not having uh, written storage procedures, maybe this webinar will uh, encourage you to write some uh, storage procedures for your establishment. So let's talk a little bit about the front of the house. Front of the house uh, servers uh, need to know that customers with allergies have concerns. They even may want to speak with one of the chefs. They may have a fair card to show the chefs. Uh, servers should know the symptoms of anaphylactic re uh, reaction or anaphylactic shock and make sure they understand the procedure for emergency protocol. Some of the things that front of the house also need to understand um, with allergens or intolerances is how to sanitize the tables, the chairs, the booths, menus, salt and pepper shakers, and the condiment containers that are on table tables. Uh, so they don't become cross-contact issues. They may replace these items with disposable products, quite possibly. It is up to the front of the house to communicate allergen or intolerance information to the back of the house. They should offer an allergen intolerance alert menu, quite possibly. Servers should clearly mark the guest's order with the allergen or intolerance for the back of the house to see and understand. Sorry about that. I'm launching a poll question. Did not unmute myself. So here we go. 
have you ever had a customer give a chef card to one of your servers? I'd like to note that um, in the handout section, you can actually go ahead and download a chef card in English and Spanish from that section. I'm going to close the poll. Thanks for the 100% of participation here. Looks like not too many people have received one. 20% say yes, and 80% have not had anyone give them a chef card. So now, uh, at least you are aware of, of chef cards. Front of the house servers should also know the menu and every ingredient in the menu items, showing labels if necessary. When the meal is delivered to the guest, it should be delivered to the customer by a manager or a person other than the server uh, who confirms the special order with the customer. When refilling any new beverage, a new set of glassware should be used. Regarding front of the house menus, menus should be um, user friendly. They should have any, uh, you should have a secret ingredient policy with your staff and have servers familiar with the ingredients used in all menu items. For back of the house and food purchasing, uh, the allergen awareness begins with the supplier or the purveyor. Use a reputable, credentialed, knowledgeable supplier who uses clearly labeled storage aisles uh, that tell that there's an allergen in, in the aisle in their warehouse. Do they load and offload their allergen or in tolerance products appro appropriately. This is important. As far as back of the house uh, storing and receiving, food, uh, store food items containing allergens or intolerances separate from non-allergen foods. Use disposable towels and spray cleaners for cleaning. Make sure that you label your shelves and equipment with stickers after cleaning with allergen identifying labels so people understand. With the um, storing and receiving for dry storage, consider storing all-purpose flour away from cornstarch, rice flour, and buckwheat flour. Store fish, crustaceans, milk, and dairy separate from vegetables and other non-allergen items. For the back of the house food preparation, uh, cook allergen-safe food first in equipment that is dedicated. A separate fryer for items that contain no dairy, no egg, no wheat, no fish, and no nut products uh, or any other allergens. Keep the safe uh, food covered and away from other foods that may splatter. Use separate labeled utensils, dishes, and cutting boards. Have your staff change their aprons before handling a specific special allergen order. The back of the house food preparation, basically if one of the staff makes a mistake uh, while cooking the allergen-free product, you just have to start over. It's simply removing the allergen from the product, the food product or the meal is not okay. When using a grill or a griddle, use foil to protect the food item from cross contact. Plate the allergen-free meal on unique tableware. The food should be delivered to the table by a front-of-the-house manager or someone other than the 
server. Back of the house food labels. The back of the house food labels, uh, the Food Allergen Labeling and Consumer Protection Act, also known as Fal uh, FALCBA, um, states that labels must identify food source names of all ingredients that contain any product, any protein derived from the eight most common allergens. For example, on label one in the slideshow, the uh, ingredients whey protein identifies milk as the allergen. Lecithin identifies uh, it as is identified as a soy product. The label identifies the natural flavors uh, as almond. In example lab label two, ingredients whey protein, lecithin, cherry, sugar natural flavors, salt, contains milk, soy, and almond. The allergen-causing ingredients are well displayed. For back-of-the-house food labels, um, what's the difference between contains versus may contain? Well, let's explore this. Contains includes the food source names of all major food allergens used as ingredients. May contain means that there is a chance that a food allergen could be present. For example, the ingredients label on the slide states milk, chocolate, sugar, cocoa, butter, cocoa mass milk powder, milk fat, soy, lecithin, and vanilla, and salted almonds, cashews, and pistachios. Contains uh, milk, soy, and tree nuts. These ingredients are in the product. May contain traces of peanuts and wheat means that the presence of these allergens is possible. In the next label, example label, whey, egg yolks, and a natural flavor uh, that contain peen peanut proteins are listed as ingredients. The contains statement must identify the words milk, egg, and peanuts. The next label warns that a manufacturer uses the same equipment to make different products. A small amount of an allergen used to make one product may become part of another product. The may contain statement is voluntary. Communication is essential between guests and managers, between guests and the server, and between the server and the managers, chefs, cooks, dishwashers, uh, bussers, and expediters. So let's talk a little bit about cross-contact and what it is. Cross-contact is the transfer of an allergen from a food containing an allergen to a food that does not contain an allergen. That's what cross-contact is. The results could mean that small amounts of each food is contained in the other food. These amounts are often so small that they can't be seen. Another illustration of cross-contact can occur, for example, when peeling cheese off of a cheeseburger to make it a hamburger due to a milk dairy allergy or removing shrimp from a salad because of a shellfish allergy. Always make sure that you use a different spatula to flip a hamburger than the one that was used to flip a cheeseburger. The common, a common mistake is to forget to wash your hands after you handle shrimp before you make the next allergen-free salad. Cleaning and sanitizing knives and other food preparation equipment is also essential. 
remember that cross contact may occur any time during process. Uh, it's all about farm to table, isn't it? How do we prevent cross contact? Just remember that to prevent cross contact, we need to change our aprons and thoroughly wash, rinse, sanitize, and air dry utensils, cutting boards, pots, and pans. Remember, if you make a mistake, you can't just remove an allergen from a meal. Even a small amount of cross contact makes a food unsafe. Washing our hands with soap and water for at least 10 to 15 seconds is essential. Please remember that sanitizing gels or water alone will not remove an allergen. As far as cross contact and hand washing protocols, scrub your nails and double hand wash after coughing, sneezing, or any contact with bodily fluids using a paper towel to turn off the faucet. Uh, provide signage for allergens for buffet and self-service bars. Dedicate labeled utensils for the areas with specific cleaning equipment. Remember that FAIR has the downloadable card for people to present to the restaurant or the chef that identify any allergen or intolerance. There are also many um, resources available on websites or apps for more information. A recent scenario uh, could be that a customer walks into your restaurant and shows a chef card allergen alert to the front of the house ho hostess. Uh, how does your front of the house and back of the house staff respond? Is your restaurant ready for this scenario? So here's the available resources that she was talking about. Um, we have some of the websites that are listed here and the Stop Food Born Illness, which um, talks about recalls, which, um, which stores sold the product. Um, USDA.gov is a good resource for you and fair.org is a great resource as well. Um, here's some apps. Again, these, um, all these slides are um, downloadable. So you can definitely um, check them out and uh, add those apps. So we thank you, uh, Marsha, very much. Um, now, where do we get more information? So let's hear from Shelley O'Toole, Manning Director of Member Services at the Ohio Restaurant Association. She's been here since 2007. Her primary responsibilities include developing and implementing strategic member recruitment and retention plans, leading the sales and marketing effort for serve safe food safety and alcohol safety training products. Shelley has devoted more than 30 years of her professional career to the hospitality industry. And she is a Associate of Applied Business Culinary Arts degree and Associate of Applied Business Food Service Management degree from Hawking College. Welcome, Shelley. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. 
Now that you know more about allergens, why not take the SurfSafe Allergens online course? Investing in the program for your managers, front of the house, and back of the house staff will protect your brand and raise employee awareness. The SurfSafe Allergens program was created in partnership with Food Allergy Research and Education, and that the organization Marsha has referred to as FAIR. The course drives home critical information employees and managers need in order to accommodate guests with food allergies. And participants are awarded a certificate of completion upon completion of the program, which is good for three years. What's really great about it with your, the industry and our busy schedules is that the online course not only takes about 90 minutes to complete, but it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week from the comfort of your office or home computer. And it's really streamlined. The online exam has 30 questions, and when you take the exam, you do not have to have a proctor to take the exam online. And best of all, it's really affordable. With your 15% member discount, it's $18.70 per student. And for all of that, participants are trained in three key areas, understanding food allergies, front of the house, and back of the house operations. So the SurfSafe Allergens program provides you with another food safety training tool from SurfSafe, the brand you trust. Thanks, Shelley. Just um, again, she, she mentioned it. There is a 15% discount for all of the products, so the SurfSafe Manager, the allergens, the alcohol, as well as the food handler. And we have the uh, website up here, so you can click on that link um, directly. Or you can copy it and paste it into your um, screen, and you can definitely get that information at a discount because you are an Ohio Restaurant Association member. So now we're going to take your questions. Um, I didn't. Um, I want to go ahead and just open it up for any questions that you might have. You can feel free to just send them in the questions panel. Uh, the first question that we do have is um, for Marsha, and I'm going to unmute her so she can um, speak. Do you have any suggestions for training staff on allergens? I think, like uh, Shelley mentioned taking the online class is very uh, affordable and it's a comprehensive class but it opens your eyes to a lot of things that you might do in your restaurant that you don't realize. Great. Well, it doesn't seem like we have any questions. Um, you can definitely reach out to Shelley at the Ohio Restaurant Association. If you have any questions uh, and you think of something after the fact, you can definitely reach out through us to um, Marsha, and we will put you in contact with her. I want to take this time to thank you for your participation in this webinar and your membership in the Ohio Restaurant Association. Sorry for the little bit of glitch with the audio. We know that your time is limited, so we appreciate you spending it with us today. We have a few upcoming events. Um, some of them are even tomorrow. So uh, we have a webinar from the National Restaurant Association on H2B and other employment visas. And then we, if for those in the Cleveland area, we have a member blender at the Pickwick and Frolic in Cleveland. And then we have a couple other webinars as well as a PAC event in later uh, August. So um, definitely check these out and go to ohiorestaurant.org to register or you can definitely call in to the office to register for those events. I want to thank our speakers again as well as the sponsors of our restaurant education series, Heartland Payment Systems and United Healthcare. Please know that the ORA exists to help you build your customer loyalty, have a rewarding career and experience financial success. Simply, we are here to help you win. Thanks and have a great day.